Right, so I'm going to rebuild uh, the whole sort of uh, graph, which will be fundamentally very similar to last week's one. Um, I've just thought I'd redo it, just want to reiterate it. And two, now they're in a newer version of Bifrost, um, just subtly different. Um, so, but you could use, if you've built the graph like we did last week, you could use that as your starting point. Um, I'm just going to redo it. So if you haven't, you can follow along, which will be helpful. Right, so first things first, we need an emitter. So I'm just going to make another little platonic solid. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller because um, when you start doing combustion, the sort of simulations can get a little bit heavier. So I'm going to make it a bit smaller so it's just not going to be using up so much, you know, voxelization of the space. I'll make it 0.25 like that. Um, let's get rid of that now. And I'm just going to move it up. And I'm going to draw a plane underneath it. We'll create a plane underneath it. Um, let's just get rid of the grid. Right, so if I select that and I go create new graph, it will automatically add him to the input. So let me just get to, I don't need this at the moment, but you can see with the new where it does it, it's got a slightly different icon for the graph. Um, if I plug that out now, you don't get this biff shape anymore. It's all kept inside there, but the biff shape is there. There it is. Um, so let's just unclick that. So you get a slightly cleaner outliner, and it's a little bit more. Um, you can do things like you can drag graphs into graphs and things like that, but we talk about that later on. Um, right, let's just hide that. And then let's make this a little bit smaller so we can see the graph. So we can start off with tab basic combustion graph. Um, and then we can explode that like so. Um, but I'm just going to do it from scratch just very quickly. But you could do this if you want to do If you're starting, you're going to get all the settings. Um, or maybe I'll just do it from here. I'll just go through what's different. So the only things that are different to the general aero graph is we have this source fuel and aero combustion settings, which we'll look at. Um, and the source fuel is attached to the additional properties of the source air and the combustion settings, the additional settings of the solver. So. I can just now plug in like that um, and then plug him out like that. Now when I hit play we get this. Um, and as you can see there's no combustion, there is no fire or anything like that. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute, it's basically because you need the material on it to see it in the viewport. Uh, so. Just going to sort of go through what's different in the settings of the source air um, to start off with, because this is a quite important aspect of using combustion. So, if I made a source air, just a raw source air, we can see that the two things that are going to be different are temperatures for the standard one is at 250, and we've got a fog density. If we look at this one, fog density is now zero and our temperature is a lot higher. Um, and this is because with a fuel source, we've got an ignition temperature. So basically, we're, pl we're putting flu, flu, we're putting flu, flu, I can't say, we're putting fuel into this sort of mix of air and um, temperature and things like that. So. We need these high, this higher temperature, otherwise it's got to be higher than the fuel temperature. At the moment it's exactly the same, so it's equal to or higher for combustion to happen. So if you just plugged in this into that and then plugged in a fuel into it, it wouldn't work until you start changing these temperatures. They've got to match either what's going on here. And you can lower this here and you can higher that there. Um, 
so that's just a sort of thing that can sort of scupper you when you first re start connecting these and making new ones and you're not even making this basic graph because you don't realize that actually the temperature is too low to, to ignite the fuel um, and the next thing is we see we've got 2.5 in the fog density here but we've actually got zero but we are seeing fog you know this is smoky fog stuff when it's like this it's basically fog density and that's because fog density is now not being controlled here anymore so it's zero um, it's being controlled by these soot properties and this is a sort of physically correct uh, smoke generation so it's calculating you know the burning of the fuel and how that will form into soot and how soot becomes smoke so it's all controlled by this bit so that's just a quick thing to sort of get in your head that don't need him anymore and you just got to be aware of your temperature because it's got to be high enough to ignite this fuel right so just delete that um, I'm just going to build a cache again so final cache uh, cache and plug him into him plug him into him these slightly like errors because of the change we can just do that and we can just delete that one and you can see in the outliner we're not getting any of these biff shapes anymore it's all just contained in the inside here um, right so let's just navigate to a file so I'm in teaching week 11 cache I've already set up a bob folder um, and I'm just going to use this guy here um, I'm just going to hashtag that one two three if you just do if you don't do that and you just selected that and save uh, did it? yeah you see you don't get those um, hashes anymore so what will happen is it will just write every frame over this file so you'll be really careful I did that earlier where I forgot that you have to have these in here so like in nuke when you're writing out nuke got some keyboard issues um, right so just make sure you've got your num your hashtags for your numbers otherwise it won't write out a sequence put that to write oops it's loading up what I did earlier because I renamed it um, now when I hit play we end this and as you can see it's still black and this is because you're not going to get the combustion aspect of the flame until you put a material on it so I'm going to do a sign material plug him into there plug him into there and I'm going to make a material go to the uh, Hype shade, shaders, AI standard volume, and I'm going to drag him in. Um, I'm just going to plug him into the volume of the material. Got that one there, volume material. That's where volumes go. The standard volume surfaces. And if I go to the outline, oh, the attribute editor. Yeah. So. As you remember from last week, these are all the wrong names for the channels, and we have to change that. Um, I set up as presets, so I'm just going to do, just to begin with, this flame material. So I'm going to replace it. If you're going to do it manually, you've got to put voxel fog density into there. Let's get a so into density. You've got to put voxel underscore fog underscore density into emission voxel temperature change that to black body if it's still a channel and then voxel temperature also into the temperature so uh, let's bring that up big so you can see it here we go so fingers crossed if I minimize that bring all this a bit more over so now we've got input going into the source air, we've got a fuel connected from our basic combustion graph we've got this here for our combustion settings um, 
simulate aero into a file cache, into a sign material, and then into the output. The only thing I'm going to just change just straight away is let's get this from smooth to fluffy. Let's so get a slightly more interesting result. So you can see already we've got this red, so we can see that there is combustion happening. <clears throat> but not massively exciting. And there we go. Right, so next video we'll start tweaking and fiddling and having a look at all the settings.